you're wanting to learn, to understand what do IT techs, what do IT administrators need to know? So we're going to be talking about some of the core skills that I would recommend that every IT tech, IT systems administrator, IT administrator should know. All right, so some of the stuff that we're going to be talking about in this video is pretty foundational. We're going to go very, very basic. But if you want to learn a lot more, I will let you know about some training courses below. I've spent a lot of time recording a whole bunch of online courses around exactly this topic. These online videos are there to help people like you to improve in your technology and get those skills that you need to become a better IT professional. Here are my top 10. Number one is physical and virtual servers. So the majority of companies around the world will have servers. Servers are what is essential to service the business in some way, right? That could be servers of different sorts of types. You've got file servers, you've got domain controllers, you've got database servers, you've got web servers, you've got servers for a lot of stuff. And a server is essential because businesses, computers out there communicate to the server to get a particular service service to them. So understand the differences between a physical and a virtual server. A physical server being the physical hardware, right? a physical long device that could be blade servers, rack servers, tower servers, and then you've got virtual servers, which are servers which are virtual. They're sitting on some sort of a physical hardware of some sort, but you can now have multiple virtual servers. A common scenario would be you would have a big physical server that's running some hypervisor technology such as VMware. So VMware is the, the leader when it comes to virtualization technology. You could be running an operating system called ESXi on a physical server, and then you can build 10 virtual servers on the physical server. You could build a server virtually for 10 different functions. So rather than having 10 physical servers, you have one physical server hosting 10 virtual machines differences between physical and virtual, but they're they're pretty elementary. So understanding a little bit about Windows Server is also good. Maybe if you've got some Linux experience, understanding the Linux, Ubuntu, Linux CentOS, Linux Red Hat, server editions as well. But everything around physical and virtual servers is pretty, pretty foundational. So you should know that sort of stuff. Number two is now infrastructure in the cloud servers in the cloud, networks in the cloud. Cloud is the thing right now. Everything is going on the cloud in some way, shape or form. Some of the more popular cloud hosting technologies would be Amazon's AWS. You've got Microsoft's uh, Azure, and then you've also got Google Cloud. They're sort of the three big ones, but you've got a whole range of other cloud sort of technologies. Essentially, the cloud means that it's out in cyberspace somewhere uh, and it's not hosted on premise, it's actually stored in the cloud, but understanding cloud technologies is pretty, pretty important. You don't have to go into the details. You don't have to know a lot about AWS, but at least understand that they exist, know what the benefits of cloud is, perhaps over on-premise physical and virtual servers. Why would I put some in the cloud? Why would I put some on-premise? Number three is Active Directory, pretty foundational. Majority of companies out there are gonna be using some sort of AD, Active Directory. Of course, this is Microsoft's solution. You build what's called a domain controller. You then get all of these AD tools, Active Directory tools installed onto it. It's used for managing your users, your computers, security groups, your distribution list, all this sort of stuff is all stored within Active Directory. It's sort of foundational and you almost need to know Active Directory as a, as a elementary piece of infrastructure. You're gonna be working in help desk, you're gonna be working into a systems engineer, systems admin, a network person. You need to know what AD is, why you'd use it, and sort of the benefits of AD. The next one is DNS. What is DNS? Why do I use DNS? So the whole point of DNS is to translate something that is readable to a machine sort of readable form. All right, so you've got a host name. Your computer may be called MyPC01. You've given it that nice name. Behind the scenes, it's actually got an IP address of 192.168.0.1. That's the IP address. Well, DNS helps you to translate in a DNS server or service of some sort. So you don't have to go and remember a whole bunch of IP addresses. DNS manages all that for you. So when you go to a website, if you go to www digitalbytecomputing.com behind the scenes you're actually telling that url that web address to go to this particular ip address so it's it's querying 
some sort of a DNS register, some DNS server, that that host name or that website actually talks to this IP address. So it sort of helps with that translation. But if we're now talking about DNS servers, understanding DNS records, A name records, C name records, PTR records, there's all these different sorts of DNS record types, which are good for you to know. DHCP, it's super important. It helps you dish out IP addresses onto the network. How does a computer get its IP address? DHCP, there's a DHCP server somewhere out on the network that's got a range of IP addresses. It's got least times against those IPs, and then it's pushing IPs across the network. A computer, connects into the network and he goes, help me, I don't have an IP address, I need an IP address. It then goes and looks for something that is dishing out IP addresses. DHCP service goes, here I am, here's an IP, and it gives it the IP address. A SAN and a NAS, we're now talking about storage. A SAN, a storage area network, a NAS, a network attached storage. Infrastructure out there, you're gonna be going into a particular workspace, you're gonna be going into a server room, into a comms room, and inside there, you're gonna have servers. We talked about physical servers, but you also have storage devices, either SAN or NAS. Essentially a big piece of infrastructure, a big piece of hardware that has a whole bunch of disks. And those disks are set up in RAID groups, they're set up in storage pools. You've got NFS, you've got SMB, you've got LUNs, you've got all of this sort of technology that is defined and set up on a SAN or on a NAS. Different purposes, SAN is block-based, NAS is file-based, SAN would be commonly used such as VMs, uh, building VMs, storing VMs, while a NAS could be used for sharing files and being more of a file server storage device. Know about SAN and NAS. Now all of this data needs to be backed up. Know about backups. Backups are important. You're gonna need to back up all of your data. So learn around some of the backup terminologies, incremental, differential, full backups, what are the differences, what are some good practices around backing up, how often should your data be getting backed up, where is the data being backed up to? Is it on-premise? Is it onto the cloud? Is it off-site? Is it to tape? Where does it go? You need to know all of this sort of stuff. It's pretty elementary to understand backups and understand the importance about backups, how to restore data, know the basics around network. You need to understand the TCP IP, the OSI models, all these sort of things that are sort of foundational around networking. Know what a switch is, know what a router is, know what a firewall. What are the benefits? Like why do I need a switch? Why do I need a router? Why do I need a firewall? Why do I have different networks? I've got network A and network B and they're on different subnets, they're on different VLANs. How does one communicate to the other? You need to create routes. What about data from the internet? Can it just all come into my network? Well, no, you're gonna have WAPs or Wi-Fi access points all around your building potentially, different hotspots. Then you can get even bigger where then you've got different sites, different offices, different regions, different countries. You've got different routing protocols. You get experienced in a lot of this as you are in the industry, but it's good that you at least understand the core foundations around networking. Now all this equipment needs to sit somewhere. Data centers, server rooms, comms rooms. This is where all the equipment really lives. And of course you should know that if we're talking about the cloud and we're talking about servers in the cloud, it doesn't just sort of, it's not floating up in space. It's not floating on a cloud somewhere. There's actually some server physically stored somewhere in a server room, in a comms room, in a data center, somewhere in the world. Learning how to rack devices, learning how to cable things, labeling things, making sure that everything works together on a physical infrastructure, making sure that there's adequate power, UPSs, redundancy of power, all that sort of stuff around our data centers, server rooms and comms rooms. And the last one is just understanding things around security, patching, monitoring. You know, if you're gonna be responsible for looking after all of the stuff that we've talked about, well, you wanna make sure that it's all secure. You wanna make sure that it's running the latest patches, vulnerabilities are fixed, that only certain traffic can access certain things, that only certain people can access certain things. Microsoft release patches. You need to patch all of your Microsoft servers, all of your desktops and laptops out in a business that all needs to be managed. And all of this needs to be monitored. You wanna make sure that everything is running healthy. So you have sensors, you have alerts that are triggered when your CPU gets too high, when there's issues on a network switch, when there's some strange behavior going on in your network, all of these monitoring devices, monitoring software, should tell you when things are going wrong. So they were my top 
10. And as I said, you can check out one of my full length courses that goes into a lot more detail about all of this. Thank you so much for tuning in and uh, spending the time with me today. Really appreciate it. Do what you need to do across the social medias by liking, commenting, subscribing, click on my face over there. Do also check out some of my other videos where we talk about all things tech.